Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Frode Sørensen. Frode is Senior Advisor at the Norwegian Communications Authority, ENCOM, and will be speaking to us in that capacity today. Frode has been leading the development of the Norwegian net neutrality policy at ENCOM since 2007 and was chair of the Beric Net Neutrality Expert Working Group from 2010 until 2018, at a time where the working group developed Beric's net neutrality guidelines. Frode is still an active member of the Beric Open Internet Working Group, representing ENCOM, and he also represents Norway since 2019 in the Governmental Advisory Committee of ICANN. Okay, Frode, you know about our 3 plus 1 format. You get three questions and one soapbox moment at the end. Let me put the first question on screen and read it out loud. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecoms operators? Thank you very much, Caroline. Um, this question relates to the fair share debate uh, and the fair share debate involves two sides, uh, the telcos and the content providers, and in particular, the large content providers, the so-called big techs. Uh, the telco view can be illustrated by the AT&T CEO, Edward Whittakers, who in 2006 already expressed that the big tech should not be able to use the pipes for free. This is similar to the argument today that big techs should be obliged to provide fair contributions. The content provider's view, on the other hand, is that telcos are actually selling empty pipes. So you need something to fill the pipes with. The demand for content is therefore driving the demand for capacity. Content can increase end user demand for access to higher speed or larger data allowances. In other words, the ISPs are using the content or content providers in order to sell their products. So there is a mutual interdependence between telcos and content providers in, in my understanding. And as Barak expressed uh, in the preliminary assessment, telco customers are downloading content. It's not content providers that are generating the content as, as such. The telco customers already pay for the internet access to download this content. But also content providers pay for distributing content on the server side. And as Barrett concludes, there is no evidence of CAPS free riding in telco networks. Okay, so uh, just to clarify, CAPS, CAPS and Big Tech are more yeah. or less the same. CAPS yeah. is the um, regulatory um, jargon for it. Um, right. yeah. And so, you refer to the preliminary assessment of Beric, which, which came out recently. And basically what it says is users are pulling the content. It's not content providers pushing it to them. Uh, users are paying to access that content. That's what your broadband subscription is for usually. And on the other side, the content providers are also contributing uh, at this stage to um, provide that content over the pipes. Um, so let us then look at the second question. What are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telecoms operators? Generally speaking, it's legitimate to ask whether big tech should pay, of course. Uh, the request is, however, so far relatively unprecise. Uh, one option seems to be uh, suggesting that content providers should be obliged to pay for the connection to telco networks. This is the so-called sending party network pays principle. <clears throat> this question uh, regarding payment is, is not new. It, it's similar to the suggestion from Ethnoid in 2012, and it was also answered by Barrick already in 2012, and it was also then repeated in the preliminary assessment uh, published uh, this year from, from Barrick. Um, and the main concern regarding sending party network pays is uh, the possibility for exploitation of the termination monopoly. Termination monopoly means that there is only one way to reach an end user. 
So even though there is competition between network providers in the market, the customer has to make a choice and, and, and use a, a particular operator, which he has a subscription with and stay with that provider for a while. And in, in that meanwhile, this operator has monopoly to reach the end user. Um, this is um, uh, similar to what happened in, in the telephony world when we have charging in the telephony world. Um, there is um, the, the calling party that, that pays. And in, in the telephony world, there is a need for regulatory intervention because the telephony provider has a monopoly to reach his customers. And by introducing sending party network pays, we will achieve a similar uh, monopoly, so-called termination monopoly <clears throat> on the internet. And that is not a, a good development in the market because the, um, the uh, regulator would have to follow closely development and there is potential need for regulatory intervention to ensure that this termination monopoly is, is not exploited. So basically what you are saying is that if we were to switch to a telephony model as suggested, as maybe suggested <laughs> in the fair contribution debate, we would also hit then the same hurdles that were found in the telephony uh, markets, which is there is only one um, telecom operator serving a user at a given time. So that operator has a monopoly uh, towards that user, which means that abuses could happen and, and would be detrimental to users and the market. Um, and and um, it, it's interesting also that you have all the dates of when the, <laughs> the debate has taken place in the past, which shows that you've been around uh, this, this area and this sector for a long time. Um, let me switch to the third question, which is a bit more narrow, maybe in scope, but there, a lot of numbers are being, uh, you know, put forward at the moment in this debate, and, and, and Beric has looked at some of the numbers in its preliminary assessment. So, do you think it is appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and the contribution of telecoms operators in infrastructure, as suggested by some? In this question, uh, I will uh, use uh, an, another report from, from Barrack to, to, uh, to discuss. Uh, it, it's the Barrack report on the internet ecosystem. Uh, and um, as this uh, report explains, in, in the internet ecosystem, telcos and content providers are playing at different layers. So the telcos are playing at uh, the underlying network layer where you have the infrastructure and interconnection between uh, telcos. The content providers are mainly playing at the overlying application layer. And looking at um, the, uh, the contribution, the, the cost that is involved for those stakeholders, the telcos provide transmission capacity, which relates to the cost of the infrastructure. And content providers, on the other hand, provide content, which relates to cost of producing content and also maintaining the content platforms as, as such. So uh, in order to answer such a question, one must take both layers into account and, and assessing the contributions from telcos and content providers at the different layers, in addition to what those stakeholders contribute to when they interconnect. So that will be my, my main um, um, argument when, when we discuss whether uh, both sides contribute fairly. And turning a, a little bit more over to the, the, the relationship to the big techs, the, the big content providers, these have an increasingly important role when people are accessing the internet. The large uh, internet platforms, they have strong network effects Examples are operating systems, app stores, and search engines. And these elements are key to the openness of the internet ecosystem as they allow end users to interact with the whole ecosystem. So big techs have become uh, gatekeepers as the lawmakers express it. And in Europe, uh, steps are taken and we are introducing the Digital Services Act and Digital Markets Act which will regulate platform providers. And the rest of the world is following this development. 
So from, from a regulatory point of view, um, the, the regulation in the network layer has been there for a long time, but uh, the, the so-called level playing field, uh, if you want to um, approach that um, aspect of the discussion, one also has to take into account that the regulation of content providers mainly has to take place at the application layer. So this is also a, a, a part of the fairness uh, discussion in, in my understanding. Okay, so basically when talking about level playing fields, you first have to define the field you're talking about. Um, and, and the field is not necessarily the same one at the network layer and at the content layer. And as you said, at the network layer, telecoms regulation has been there for a long time and you know, NCOM and other regulatory authorities have been enforcing it for a long time. And now at the content layer, we have the DSA and the DMA that will hopefully um, solve some of the issues that are present. Um, I'm not saying all of the issues because you can never solve all of the issues, but most of the issues. Um, and, and so when looking at those discussions about um, contributions, first define the field and then look at the fairness within that field or on that field. Um, we're reaching the, the, the end of the pod podcast, which is the moment where you have um, a free ride moment, to, to quote the telecoms uh, um, um, term <laughs> that, you, that you mentioned at the beginning. Um, and it's called the soapbox moment. So basically, now is the time where you can either summarize your key points or add an element that you think is, is crucial for this debate to go in the right direction. Um, I will also um, add that you've mentioned two reports um, uh, of Beric. We will put the links uh, on the page of the uh, podcast so that people can, you know, check them out and 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 read about it. So here is your uh, moment of glory, <laughs> um, and let me give you the floor for the soapbox moment. Thank you. Um... While not preempting the debate or, or drawing any conclusions at this stage. In my view, it's important to conduct a full analysis of the case and take the whole internet ecosystem into account. Both the network layer where the telcos mainly operate and the application layer where content providers mainly operate. Maintaining open internet at the network layer is fundamental. Any measures should ensure that net neutrality is not threatened. But there is also a need for openness at the application layer of the internet, where the DSA and DMA are important tools to ensure this. Thank you. Thank you, Frode. I think that was uh, very clear. Um, obviously, the next months, years will show us how successful the DSA and the DMA is at getting that openness. And you've mentioned you know, the important concept uh, in your soapbox moment, which is net neutrality. Um, I think all the regulators have fought hard to uh, set the principles and to preserve them. And uh, users will certainly appreciate if you continue defending them. Thank you so much for your time. And um, this is probably the beginning of the discussion, uh, knowing that there might be consultation upcoming. Uh, so who knows, maybe we will have a follow-up conversation in the next months. Thank you so much. Thank you.